This is this is my always been my 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 thinking with Kanye West. He'll do something crazy, but then he'll turn back around and do something cool and you never know what to expect from him. So don't get too upset when he does crazy things. Let Kanye be Kanye. He'll make some good music. You'll forget all about it. You'll be in your car listening to it in the summertime. You forget about those tweets. You forget about his stupid red hat. And he'll just be Kanye. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big Kanye fan. I was a little on edge when he started attacking the president and uh, obviously someone that has tried to do some good here in Chicago. And I haven't, we haven't seen Kanye here in the actual city in a long time. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping like this will be something big and impactful for us. And it's funny you mention that because we were just talking with uh, one of the best radio stations out there, especially for hip hop, GCI, and we had their personalities, Kyle, Kendra G, and Leon on. And mm -hmm. we were talking about Kanye's impact in the city. And they said, well, Leon brought up, what about Donna's house? We're going to forget like that's not yeah. something? Yeah. To which Kanye Kyle then said, yeah, it's something, but I haven't seen Kanye there. I've been there, Kyle was saying, more than Kanye's been there. So it's almost like there's this detachment from Chicago, so there's already a little bit of angst there. Yeah. And then, oh, you're pro-Trump. Oh, you're hating on Barack. Okay, you've lost yeah. us. Yeah. So whatever happens to that, I hope it is something that moves the needle a little bit to bring him back into the graces of Chicagoans because... It's where he was made. Especially yeah. Especially after everything we've seen with Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper goes to city council meetings. He held, held, holds protests. He goes uh, to the community and delivers money to schools and does appearances. Like, he does so much here in Chicago. It sounds like you're saying this is who Kanye's always been. Like, this is who Kanye's been. I mean, ever since when he, before he was 19, 20, he's always been that. Yeah. <laughs> but then you look, listen to his beat tape and listen to what he, he's good at what he does. Genius. Making music. He's good at that. Is he good at PR? Maybe not. <laughs> is he good at expressing himself? Not so much. Is he material for you as a comedian? I feel like there's something, there's always got to be, like, I feel like you guys sit there, and I'm saying you guys because I'm not a funny guy. Mm -hmm. I feel like comedians sit there and say, this, this is gold. This is subject I can run with. Does Kanye fit for some but, of that? For, for maybe for standing up, no, because he, he, he moves so fast. So you might tell a oh, Kanye okay. joke today, and then two weeks later, <laughs> yeah. Kanye's doing something totally different. He might have bangs, or <laughs> who knows? Who knows you what really he's doing? You, you never really can't project what it's going to be. Are you listening yeah. to Kanye? I do listen to him, you know, when he, when he comes out with stuff. I like, uh, he has a new song coming out with Travis Scott that I'm excited about. Yeah. I'm excited about this new Kid Cudi project. I mean, I'm going to check it out, and I guarantee it's going to be at a level where I'll forget about those and tweets. And that's, that's what I feel like, too. I feel like once the music comes back out, everyone's going to be like, man, I, I can't even remember what he was saying. This music hits really? so hard. Yeah, I really I'm just, I'm just amazed yeah. that people get so mad about tweets. That's They're a, just tweets. Are you a big social media guy, like, with that stuff, or no? Not with expressing myself like that, but yeah. you have to use social media if you're, like, in entertainment or in, you know, just try to promote yourself or just keep the conversation going. Uh, and you know what He's not going to talk about it, and he has a good point because this is something that was talked about in entertainment. This was talked about on TV way before he even did that joke, and it's kind of weird that for some reason people think he cracked some Law and Order SVU episode with that stand-up. <laughs> he said Google it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it Google it. It's, it's been out for a minute, and uh, I don't know, I just felt the media kind of used, you know, him to be the springboard, you know, for this controversy, and uh, I don't think he should say anything because, you know, this is something that everybody yeah. knew, and, you know, he's not the one that it was a Sherlock Holmes and cracked his case. Well, I really want to know what you think. Um, obviously, Bill Cosby, an iconic, not only television actor, comedy, known mm -hmm. for his comedy, um, just from your standpoint, also being an African-American man, but an mm -hmm. African-American comedian, yeah. how are you taking this? Because I'm disappointed and somewhat shocked. Well, I'll say I'm disappointed because Bill Cosby looks like my father, first of all. They look mm -hmm. just alike. Oh, <laughs> it, it, he actually does look He like looks it. like okay. Bill Cosby. People always call him Bill Cosby. And, mm -hmm. and as a black man, you know, you would always see, you know, like, oh, wow, this guy is doing, you know, creating his own way, even in the 60s and 70s when it was too yeah. hard for black guys to do that. Uh, for, for me, you know, I'm disappointed, but, you know, people are imperfect, and for us to, you know, think that anyone is beyond reproach of doing anything horrible is almost naive. To think that someone can't do a sin or do just wrong. Just because he's that talented. Just because he's that talented. Just because you tell jokes doesn't mean that you're, uh, you know, can't do anything bad. Yeah, you know, one of the other things, because there's so many layers to this entire situation with the Bill Cosby and all the accusations and now a conviction potentially um, and looking at potential jail time here, is how this came about. No, Hannibal didn't crack the code. This wasn't some law and order situation. But in, in one of those circumstances, speaking from a man's uh, point of view here, this was a man who said, hey, guys, just so you know, there's a lot of allegations out there about Bill Cosby. Go Google it. 
And that's when people started to listen. It wasn't enough that you had these accusers for years say this stuff and make these accusations and it fell on deaf ears. It took a man entertaining on a stage to say that and then it kind of got some momentum. That's kind of crazy a little bit, yeah, isn't but it? I'm curious on why didn't this happen when they made jokes about it on 30 Rock? Why did True. It, why didn't this happen? Why so why so t why is it happening? How did it happen that way? What, well, what? see that's a whole nother some drinks that, that we have a lot, conspiracy yeah. theories that I have. You know, it's just sure. like that's just the way it happened and uh you know he, he he'll he'll go Hannibal probably will go down forever, even though if you just look it up, he is not even on the timeline of oh, this. Yeah. You know, yeah. legitimately. He's not on the timeline of this. He was just one of them just happened to talk about it. And a one-off joke. This is not something that was yeah, in the set. Not it was part just of the something set, he was yeah. just riffing on, and then someone took it and just ran with it. And I, I don't blame the media, but I kind of blame the media that used him as his vehicle mm -hmm. when it was already out there. When you could have told this story to the media yourself. Sounds like you go inside this thing for a 10-minute cry session in the library if you just need to vent. In Utah? So, in you, Utah. You immediately dogged it. I was like, I love this. This is so great. Come on, Brian, right? <laughs> Look at this. Right? This is ridiculous. I mean, you know what? Uh, that's that's disturbing because you clearly need some help. If you are just like doing some, I'll be right back. I, yeah, you right. know, if it's, if it's just <laughs> overwhelms you where you need to go into a closet, there's some problems. Let me tell you what probably happens in this closet. A student hot boxes this closet. Yeah. They're probably kissing in this closet. Yeah. Maybe even some sex in this closet. What? How about maybe using the in restroom Utah? in this closet? These are college kids. How about sleeping in that closet? Anything is happening in the cry closet but crying. Oh, my That's goodness. That's just what it is. Guys, I mean, are you kidding me? You're talking about college I kids I thought it was here. a great idea. In this age of mental health, and we've got all these people who are unstable and shooting up places, I was like, this could be a good thing. You will not find tears. You may find some other things there, and you ain't finding no tears yeah. in that closet. It's going it's it. it's to smell a little loud in there. <laughs> like yes, loud, yes. Or it's going to smell like other things. But tears... And salty tears, it might not smell like you that. You tell me a college kid's not going, oh, perfect. I had a but I know these, 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 these new millennial kids, and I don't know if you even call kids in college now millennials. I think millennials are like older. Um, yeah. I think it's 22 to 35. Yeah, so these are like. They are. Millennials are getting older. Older. Like, so I don't know it's what. A different these, breed of human. A different that we're breed talking. of human now. <laughs> Maybe they're a, way more emo than, than we know. Yeah, Maybe, right? Yeah. Oh. I mean, could you imagine them crying in a, in a, in a closet? It's healthy, you there's guys. There's no crying it's in healthy. the library. Yeah. Just like there's no crying. <laughs> I do find it weird that it would be in the library. I do yeah. find it weird to be in the library. Uh